Let's talk about flying cars. This is something that you're keenly interested in now, CEO of, of Kitty Hawk. Where are we in that process? That sounds like something squarely in the realm of the fantastic. How close are we, do you think, to, to having them more I, widely available? I have my metric, and when I go to people and give them, like, to say five years ago, I went to automotive CEOs and said, I'm working with self-driving cars. I get this smile. Huh. Huh, nice you say that. Okay. And then they turn away and talk to someone more serious than me. And, and the same is happening with, with flying cars, flying machines right now. So when I talk to people, they smile. It's kind of curious, but nah. Um, so we're still in the, in the phase where, where I think there's, there's no belief in the population that can happen. But when you think about it, um, transport on the ground is actually really bad. It's very congested. It's hard to get around. It gets more and more congested. The air is free. There's almost nothing in the air. So in the end of the day, when we think, look forward, say 50 years, 100 years, even maybe 10 years, I see that more transportation, even daily transportation to and from work, we go through the air than on the ground. So we have built a, a very first prototype vehicle, and we're not the only ones, I should say, of a vehicle that stays over water for now, and it's, a, it's kind of a water sports tool. It's not a daily transportation medium, but what it has has the same elements. It's electric, it's very quiet, it takes off vertically, flies horizontally, and most importantly, we've gotten to the point where we computerize the system so that every person can learn how to fly in five minutes. Mm so that we can make flying accessible to a very broad set of people. That system is called Kitty Hawk, Kitty Hawk Flyer, will go on the market later this year. And if everything goes well, we deliver our first units uh, by the end of 2017. That's just the last question about it. What's the biggest hurdle uh, to being able to I know that the first prototype was noisy, for instance. How do you overcome something like that? What, what, what are you still uh, having to figure out at this point? We've made really great progress talking to the FAA about the regulatory environment, and I'm, I must say, the FAA is actually a very forward-looking and, and, and constructive entity. I really love working with them. I think on the physics side, um, we can probably fly around 20 minutes or so. I wish we had battery capacity could let us fly five hours, mm. uh, like a regular helicopter. And then um, the last really question is, is really the, the societal side. What's the path where we take this from a water sport toy into mainstream so I can hop on my Kitty Hawk flyer and fly to work? Like people in New York will, will, will know this, like the Lincoln Tunnel, right? It's a good example. The Lincoln Tunnel you could probably cross in three minutes. Mm. And if everybody used Flyer, we could just get over and, and commute. And right now it can take upwards of an hour to get to the tunnel.